Today I've got some faux leather DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The very first project is going to be a leather pumpkin, I guess you could call it a wreath. So we're going to take this Dollar Tree wreath form and mine came from Goodwill, of course. You can see it's already been used, it's kind of sad looking, but I'll fix it up. I'm going to use a piece of fabric that I thrifted, and this is a faux leather. You can use an old purse, you can use an old jacket, maybe you got an old skirt, an old pillow. Now I've got some of these fall colored eucalyptus leaves and these beautiful oak leaves. And then I have some dried looking hydrangeas in brown and cream and it's really pretty peachy color. Perfect for fall. I'm going to cut this one off and I'm going to hang on to my stem. I'm going to use that in a minute. These are some berry picks from Dollar Tree. Alrighty, so I'm going to start off by making sure that I have enough piece, uh, I have a wide enough piece and long enough piece for the form. I'm going to get my finger protectives and my clamps. Now I'm silly. You see I already have my finger protectors on. You don't need them at this point. I, I have no idea what I was thinking when I did this. I was just so excited when I had the idea to do it because I have never seen one. I really wanted to share it, so I went a little bit nuts. I was kind of rushing through it, you know, going with the flow. But you get the drift. You won't need your finger protectors yet. So you're going to start taking your little clamps. These came from the Dollar Tree. I believe they're six in a pack, and I went ahead and, and I just have two packs because I use these all the time. And I'm going to just kind of stretch this over the frame and clamp it off where um, I need it, where I think I'm going to need to glue it down. So just making sure that it's enough to cover completely over and start laying it out exactly where it's going to be when I start putting the glue down to hold this to the frame. Continuing around, this is not a, like a stretchy fabric, so you just kind of pleat it where you need to and you can flip it to the front and make sure you know that everything is where it needs to be. If you pull too tightly on your fabric across these forms, it will kind of deform the shape of it. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to continue around. Oop, they want a fingertip. Until you get all the way around. And I wanted to leave this in so you could see exactly how you're going to be doing it. Okay, see, this is why we don't glue it first. This is why we place our clips, look at it, and then go back, look at the front, and fix all the little areas where we need to retuck and fix the little pleated areas. You want everything to look nice and neat. Then, once you get it in place, you can start adding your glue. Put your glue gun on cool. Do not use hot temperature or it's gonna drip off of your wreath form rather than clinging to it so that you can glue this down. So keep it on cool, put your finger protectives on, uh, protectors on, and then begin to place this down. Just remove one clip at a time, just kind of uh, lightly pull, and then press down and clip it in place. Same thing here, remove a clip, gonna go along, see how it clings to that? That's exactly what you want. Pull it over, you can kind of roll it down and that way it the glue is going to get the fabric on both sides it's going to catch the front side and the back side and it will make a little tunnel like across your pieces of wire if that makes sense i hope that makes sense this is just going to give it more security this way and you don't have to worry about it popping off i do recommend that you use something like a gorilla glue here just to be on the safe side because you do put just a little bit of tension on the fabric and you don't want anything to come unglued. I also do not recommend that you put this outside because it is a fabric and it, if you live in a humid, hot climate like I do, it may cause the glue to melt and the fabric to um, possibly mildew and that would be just yuck. So this is an arrangement that you would probably want to just keep on the inside of your house. Okay, so we're going to continue along just like this. Left this in there for um, you guys and gals who asked that I not do everything in high speed. You wanted to see exactly what was going on, so I'm going to leave this in here for you. I'm not concerned about the extra fabric. I do not want to cut it off at this point. We're just going to glue down all the way around until we're back to our starting point. 
So who is having fall weather? We're not having any, of course. It's still summertime here, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it's been so hot, so, so hot in Southern Alabama. What's your weather like today? Is it nice? Do you have rain? I love a rainy day, but I do not like the humidity that comes afterwards. Not at all. Okay, so we're almost all the way around. We're almost done here. Keep going, and you can see, if you look all the way around, that the fabric is cupped all the way around. Now, you can very easily take your scissors, very sharp scissors, of course, and be careful, and then go along the ends of those clips, and you can trim off anything that you don't need. If you leave your clips in place, this will ensure that you do not cut it too short. See there? Nice. Very nice. And then, when you're sure that everything is cool, you can just take all of your clips off. And then we'll flip it over and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh my goodness, I love this. Now I know Dr. Dollar Tree has some, um, they have some panels of leather there, but I don't think they're big enough. Okay, so I took that stem and I'm just using it to kind of, I'm gonna use it as a base to put our swag on top of the pumpkin. But you can use, it's about a foot long, so whatever you have, you know, if you've got, um, a stick or something that you want to use you can certainly use that or if your hydrangeas have long stems you can just leave them long and then just wrap them around each other and that would be fine too but this gives me an idea of how big i want my swag to be on the top of the pumpkin so i get my proportions right so i'm just going to put the dark on the edges and i'm going to move them down a little bit place the lighter ones on the inside these are so pretty. These came from the thrift store, but I can tell you right now that I have seen these at Hobby Lobby, so there's no telling what they originally cost. And then I'll put that peachy color one right in the middle. I'm just gonna flip it over so I remember where everything is. And I'm gonna use my zip ties to put this together. If you don't have zip ties, that's not a problem. You can just use your wires for this. You can use some jute cord if you need to use it. If you have bread ties, you can use those. You know, just be creative. Use what you have. If you don't have any of that stuff, you could always use some twine. And then this is how we're going to put it together. I have white and black ties, and mine came from the Dollar Tree. And they're in the automotive section, so they have a shorter one like I'm using now, and they have some really long ones. But this is a good size, um, in my opinion, for doing the crafts that, that I do here on this channel. They are suiting all of my needs. So you can see here, I'm just kind of overlapping the stems and just going over across that um, the stick there or that long stem that we had cut down. Sometimes I put the zip ties on backwards when I get in a hurry and I have to flip them around. Okay. So I can use my, um, just pull those down because the zip ties don't, don't keep anything like where you can't move them. Like if you hot glued them, you wouldn't be able to slide them around. So using these zip ties will allow me a little more of an opportunity to kind of uh, arrange them a little bit better, you know, move them around. Then I'm gonna go across the middle to lock that one in the center. Okay, so this is essentially going to be what I would call the base of my swag because this is our starting point. This is our jumping off point, And then we're going to add and embellish to this. So these beautiful leaves, I know for a fact, came from um, Hobby Lobby because I saw somebody do a walkthrough and I saw these leaves, but mine came from the thrift store. I was so blessed to find these. I could not believe it. And I just knew when I saw them, they would be perfect for this leather pumpkin because they kind of have that leathery look, don't they? And that beautiful rich brown, so pretty. So you're gonna get some options here. I'm gonna show you if you wanted to do three like this and not have a stem on your pumpkin, this is how you would do it. And for me, I'm just gonna trim it down and poke it up there in the top. Once you get so many in there, they'll kind of lock together. All those little branches will lock together like when you use a grapevine wreath and you don't have to use glue, they kind of stick. You can definitely reinforce it with some glue if you want, but at this point, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going with this swag. 
And I do end up changing it in the end, but I want to give you some options. So if you like it this way, feel free to do it this way. And I only use three of those little branches of the, the greenery there. I'm going to pull my eucalyptus picks apart. These are gorgeous. Dollar Tree has some really pretty eucalyptus already out for fall too, so you can look and find all colors. I, I found like a purplish, um, I don't know, more of like a maroon kind of color. The green, I've seen brown. There's a lot of different colors. And of course the green, you know, depending on what color um, scheme that you like. But I love the richness of this with the leather pumpkin. So I kind of, it just feels cohesive to me. I mean, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good. All the colors are meshing well together. Nothing is really jumping out at you. It just looks, it looks nice. Again, I'm tucking those in, but if you know exactly where you want your items to be, you can go ahead and glue them. I just like to kind of get an idea before I glue anything down. Cause then it's harder to fix. I mean, you can fix it, but it's a little harder and a little messier. So this is kind of what the swag is gonna look like on top of the pumpkin if you like it like this. And I'm just gonna put it across the pumpkin and I love the scale of it. I think it's perfect for the top. This is how it looks with that third stem right in the middle. But I decide I wanna try something else. So I'll show you in a minute what that's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and take those picks and put them randomly here and there. And I left my, I didn't edit out where I move things around because I want you to see that I do that too. I don't always put stuff down in one spot and it's perfect and that's where I leave it. No, that is not true. That is called editing. I try to leave it out um, to keep the videos at us, you know, where it's, you can get under 30 minutes of viewing time, right? So I have to cut some things out, but I want you to know that I'm not perfect either and I do move things around too. So I'm gonna use my zip tie and go right through the stem of that wire pumpkin and zip it on tightly. And you can see everything's staying in there and that's not even glued yet, so it's pretty good. So this is how it's gonna look so far. I love it. What do you think about the leather pumpkin? So pretty. So this is where I'm showing you, I'll leave everything in. I'm going to move some things around, pull some things out, fluff some things up. I'm gonna remove those little picks that are hanging off the sides and I'm gonna place them a little bit lower. And don't you think that looks better? I think the proportion of it is much better in that area. Then I can go ahead and glue it down because I know that's exactly where I want it. It's kind of hard when you're working on a swag and it's not connected to the piece to really know how it's gonna blend and fit. So I like to do it this way. Whatever feels right to you is exactly how you need to do yours. Just be inspired and do what you want. Now I just ran out in the driveway and grabbed up a stem. This little piece of a limb or a branch um, was where we had a tree cut down and it was just left behind and I grabbed it up and thought it would be perfect for this pumpkin and I zip tied it on. So now we have a little stem in the top and it's a natural looking stem. You could definitely use something bigger, something smaller. You could leave it off or you could use that little um, extra leaf pick in the top if you prefer yours that way. Y'all, let's celebrate 15,000 subscribers. Y'all are awesome. Here are the giveaway rules. Be sure that you pause and you check this out so that you have a chance to win. Okay, the next project is a wood leaf set. I'm gonna use some Jenga blocks, some wood leaves from Dollar Tree, a piece of pretty fall paper, and then some more of that same leather. I'm going to trim this down so that one of these pretty leaves can then be covered in, in that pretty paper. So I'm just gonna trim this down where it's more workable. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive. Now the spray adhesive was coming out kind of chunky here so I had to clean the tip and then spray it a couple of times and before it dried, put it down on my leather piece. Press it in place really, really well before I flip it over, because it takes a minute for that glue to kind of stick. Then I'm gonna quickly flip it and then work out any of the bubbles that are in the side of it. I'm just holding it in place and then pressing it out with my hands. You can also use a roller if you wanna do it that way. I'm gonna use my little 
uh, my little knife here that comes from the Dollar Tree. Love these things. Yes, they are sharp, so you have got to be careful. They do come in a three pack. That makes it pretty awesome. So I'm just going to trim as close as I can, as neatly as I can, around this pumpkin. Now, I did reinforce the tips with a little bit of hot glue just to hold that in place so I could quickly get this project out for y'all. I'm going to go on to the other leaf and add a very nice, thick, evenly coat of glue on the back. This Elmer's glue is purple, so it makes it really nice so you can see exactly where you put the glue and where you miss spots, so it's good. While the school stuff is on sale, go ahead and grab some of these and add to your crafting toolkit. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over and it fits great on this piece of 12 by 12 um, crafting paper or jacket or paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you wanna call it. Use whatever you have for this too. Whatever color you like, whatever you have. These leaves were used in another project from last year. That's why they're painted. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over and be sure that we roll all of this down. I want it to stick to my glue nice and evenly. Everything to become one. Now you can use your scissors and just go ahead and start cutting pieces out. You don't have to fussy cut if you don't have fine um, tip scissors here. I'm going to show you what you can do. Cut the majority of the paper off. You know, it doesn't take long to do this. Just cut it off and then we will um, trim it down a little bit finer with this. If you want to do it this way, you certainly don't have to. If you don't, I have another option for you. But I'm just showing you here how close and clean the blade gets. You can really get in those spaces really well and just cut that off. Again, if you don't want to do it that way, that's fine because we are going to sand it down. I want to give you a lot of options so there's no excuses for not crafting. Grab a fingernail file, y'all. I love this. You can get into all those corners and round spaces and all it really is is a piece of sandpaper on a stick, right? So why not use it to sand your projects? You can also use those um, nail files from Dollar Tree. Have you ever tried using an emery board for sanding? Pretty crazy, but it works. And you can get big packs too, so that's awesome. So I'm gonna use furniture repair markers, and I think I use maple. I forgot to show you the color here, but I think I use maple. And I'm just gonna go around the edges of the leather one so that these edges don't stand out. You can use a little bit of paint here if you want, but I found that the furniture marker makes it really easy to go over narrow spaces, and I could quickly wipe it off of that leather if I went over. We're not gonna do anything to the edges of this one. And this one has the dark edges now, and it blends in a little better. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to use a furniture repair marker here. Any color that you want, I just pick this one out and then I'm gonna color these blocks because I don't want this pale color to show. I'm just gonna go ahead and color them. I'm gonna do four of them and two of them will be used on the back of each one of these leaves to help stand them up. The stem is so narrow, you can't stand them up just on the stem. I mean, you might, but then you would be able to see your the appliance that you put on there to keep it standing up, you'd be able to see that. And I don't wanna see that. I want it to almost be invisible, like it's floating there. So I'm going to lean this on its side where the side is touching, and we're gonna put it right there on the side of the leaf. We're gonna do it on the left for one, and we're gonna do it on the right for the other leaf. That way you can put them together if you wanted to, or you could stand them separately. You could also make this one piece overlapping the middle if you would like and connect them together. So now I'm putting this one on and it looks good there. Find my position, find my spot. I know I'm gonna need to put my glue there. So you can do it like this. So you put the glue on the block or the glue on the leaf, really doesn't matter. And you wanna stand it up while the glue is drying so that you know it's balanced. And that's what I'm doing, giving it a minute to dry. 
and making sure it will stand. Now when you get ready to display these, you can use a tiny bit of that thick mounting double stick tape on the bottom of your Jenga blocks and that will help really hold them in case you have a house where your, you know, things jiggle around. Okay, next is a leather bottle accent. Y'all, I'm loving it with this leather this year. So this was just a salt jar. It had salt in it and uh, I saved it because I really like it, or the bottle. I'm gonna use some of these beautiful leaf rub-ons. Yes, rub-ons actually work on, on this. I'm gonna use those from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some more of that leather and some of these furniture nails or brads or tacks, whatever you have. You can spray paint tacks if you want to. And then you're gonna have some tools here. I'm gonna use my white chalk pen here that came from Dollar Tree and use it on the back side of this fabric and just draw out a circle that I know is going to fit on the front of my bottle. Now I am going to draw a narrow band, almost like a belt, to connect to it, whatever size or width you want. And then I'm gonna cut that out with my rotary cutter on my mat. Easy. Now you can use the leather from the Dollar Tree to do this project because it's smaller and you won't need as large of a piece. So you could definitely use it on this. Okay, so I know I want it to go around the center of the bottle like this. And this leather piece is definitely big enough to go around. I'm gonna cut out the circle. I'm just gonna cut it off the big piece and then I'm gonna trim it down right along that white line so that I have a circle like this. And you see how it fits perfectly on the bottle? That's why you need to measure it first. Then I'm gonna choose a leaf. I was so excited when I did a little sample with this to see that it actually works on this fabric. Now I don't know if it's gonna work on all fabric, but it worked on this one. I'm gonna cut it down to a manageable size, then I'm gonna apply the leaf that I like on top of it. If you press it down just a little, it, kinda, it will kinda stick just a tad for you kind of hold itself in place just a little bit before you start really pressing it down. So I've kind of centered it here and then I'm gonna take my plastic um, squeegee or whatever kind of tool you wanna call this. It's actually to be used on vinyl. And I'm just gonna start pressing down and um, from the center outward and I'm gonna hold it in place because I don't want it to skip up on me. So just take your time here, hold it in place. And then I want you to see how good this turns out. Oh my goodness. Peel it off slowly in case you need to rub it down a little bit more. Y'all, would you look at this leaf? It's gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This has really opened a door for opportunities in other projects, knowing that those will stick to this type of fabric. So exciting. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my little um, pliers here. These are bull nose pliers. A lot of people ask me about these. They are wonderful and I use them all the time in crafting. I'm gonna cut those down so that the heads are flush. Now I need to find a positioning for this round disc. You can always use, uh, lead this long and wrap it around the bottle, but I wanted to make it a little bit shorter. So I'll show you what I did. I'm gonna use the center almost like a belt buckle and I'm using some E6000 here. This is just the one that's branded for the uh, jewelry because it has a smaller tip, but I took the tip off of it. If you use hot glue on some fabrics, it will pucker and I don't like that look. So that's why I'm using the E6000 rather than hot glue here. And I'm gonna use my little clamps to hold it in place for just a little while so it has time to kind of adhere. Now I'm gonna wrap this around and this is when I decide I don't wanna overlap it completely. I just wanna overlap it just a little bit. So I'm gonna trim it off here, leaving just enough so that I can tuck it and glue it underneath the round part. And I think that's perfect. Once my glue is dried, which doesn't take very long if you're careful with it, I'm gonna take the clamps off and then wrap it around the bottle, kind of getting that centered so that it's the circle's in place. I don't want it to stick up above the bottle um, curve there. I'm gonna wrap it around, hold it in place with my fingers. Same process as before, add my glue down here, and then just press that down into place. I've already kind of eyeballed it and made sure that it's in the right spot. So then I decided to do a band around the top. 
So I'm just going to cut a narrower piece and I'm going to fit it around the top. Once I know how much I'm going to need of that, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and then I am going to cut a little triangle in the end of it, just like that. And I like the way that looks. I'm going to put the little joint in the back. Now, this will slide on and off the bottle, which is fine if you want to be like me and use your projects over and over again. So I don't want to glue it down to the bottle itself. I'm going to use a little bit of double stick tape. Um, and I'm just going to use that to help hold this in place. And it would be perfect. It'll last all fall season like this. And if I want to change it out, I can change it. Now I'm going to move on to those little um, furniture nails there. I'm going to add some hot glue. I got it on the cool temperature here so that I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm just going to position it where it looks like this was tooled together rather than glued together. What a pretty look. And I love that they're a bronzy or brown like color because they really blend in nicely with the leaf and the leather. This is, oh my gosh, this does not look handmade to me. This looks like something you would buy at a store. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, if y'all like it, please give me a thumbs up. Yes, I work hard. Yes, just like y'all do. Okay, so now we're going to use this as a vase. And I'm just going to cut down some uh, extra pieces that I've saved from other projects. And the hydrangea. I had an extra one of those, so they match perfectly. And you can just make them into a little bundle here and use them like this if you would like. And it's really pretty. It'll fit right in the top. And this is how it will look. Now it's time for our final reveal. And I do recommend that you stay to the end of the video. I sure do. Okay. So this is how this looks. I went ahead and took the hydrangea out because I think the greenery looked better there. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you have not already. It means so much to me. I am active in the comments. I am always here to answer your questions and talk to you. You're very important to me. Your viewership is important to me. And I just love doing what I do with you guys cheering me on. I really do. It's such a blessing. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So you can see our beautiful pumpkin hanging here. And look at these leaves. They're so pretty. Love it. If you're loving this video, please share it with a friend or family who would also find this interesting and inspiring. I always love to bring a little bit of joy to everybody every day. Here's another look at that beautiful bottle. I cannot get enough of that. And the leather leaf. It almost looks like it has veining in it, doesn't it? I'm okay with that. It's not perfect. But hey, we're not perfect either. We're perfectly flawed. And that's okay. Leave me a comment. Do you like these leather crafts? And which one do you like the best? These are so pretty. I love the combination of the colors and the richness. And look at that blue in there. That's really nice, isn't it? Stay tuned because I'll be doing some blue. Okay, for a bonus in this video, if you would like your name entered twice for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway, put a star in the comments with your comment a star and your comment of something that brings you joy today. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.